Open rebuke is better than secret love. There are two types of friends. Let's get into it. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Proverbs 27 and 5. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Wow, this is heavy. This is heavy, brothers. There are two types of friends in life. Two types. And most times we never figure out who's who. You have the friend that will rebuke you. Openly rebuke you. Now, when I say openly, this could be face-to-face -face in private, or this can be in a public format in front of others, just depending on the situation. Maybe it needs to be in private face-to-face, -face, or maybe it needs to be in public. If you are misguiding, misleading, hurting the public, maybe it needs to be in public. But their intent is to correct you honorably and righteously and they're leading in love and love and respect and honor and they want the best for you. They want you to reach the highest point of you. And that's the friend you want. If you're gonna inflict or in, 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 incur some wounds, you wanna incur those kind of wounds. You want those kind of wounds inflicted upon you, the wounds of a friend. Because, hey, it could be a tough pill to swallow when you're rebuked. You know, most people don't like to be corrected. We all think we're right most of the time. But when a friend, a true friend, rebukes you, it's gonna, it's gonna elevate the quality of your life. It's gonna elevate you as a being, as a human being. It's gonna make you more potent in this world, more powerful, and more effective in this world. That's open rebuke. That's better than secret love. It's better than someone saying they love you, they admire you, they appreciate you. But those words are never manifested into action or words. It's all wordplay. That's it. But you see no manifestation of what they're saying. It has no worth, it has no value. We've both encountered these two types of friends. I, I hope we have. I hope we have one from from learning from, or well, both learning from, but one is, is truly a blessing. The one that uh, can rebuke you because he wants the best for you. And I know in life, I've know I, I know I've encountered this. Sometimes who we think is our friend is really our enemy, and who we think is our enemy can really be our friend but because the gentleman disagrees with us or rebukes us right gave, he, he's given us resistance sometimes we automatically put him in that enemy box and because this other gentleman has agreed with us and you know he may compliment us encourage us give us some flowers figuratively, uh, figuratively speaking we automatically put him in this friend box when we truly never know the hearts of men until they manifest the words. That's how you know their intent and how they really feel in their hearts, through their works, through their actions, not wordplay. Wordplay without works, without manifestation, is worthless. You know, I look at the Bible, and this has been going on forever. Well, we've got these two friends mixed up, and these two friends have entered our lives. And who we thought was a friend was really an enemy. Who we thought was an enemy was really our friend. But I'm telling you, brothers, you want to embrace that friend who has your best interests at heart, who is not a yes man, who does not mind pulling your coattail, who does not mind rebuking you. That's the friend you want to have around. 
iron sharpens iron. Now that doesn't mean just because we're intellectually sparring, iron sharpens iron. It also means we're holding each other accountable. We want the best of one another. We can pull each other to the side or in the open and say you're wrong, depending on the situation. You say you're wrong. Man, I, I, I read the, the, the encounter uh, King David had with Nathan, the prophet Nathan. Same encounter, man. David, man, was doing some shady stuff, man. Messed with the married woman, Bathsheba. She was with Uriah, you know, a soldier in his army. And, and he plotted to sleep with this woman, a married woman, got her pregnant, and then plotted on having Uriah put on the front line and killed. Now here comes Nathan, the prophet, to the king. And Nathan rebukes David. I won't go into the parable he gave David. He, he recited to David, but at the end of the day, he rebuked David, the king. He rebukes the king. He pointed out the errors of the king's ways. This is why you can't put any man on a pedestal and you can't put any man below you. Every man must look another man eye to eye. No man is above me. No man is below me. We all look each other eye to eye. So yes, if I'm king, a prophet can rebuke me. And, and vice versa. Because at the end of the day, when you strip these titles, we're men. We're men. Strip the title of prophet, strip the title of, of king, of president, of vice president, of CEO, whatever title you have. A gangster, a so called loser. If you want to give a personal title, bomb. Man, you strip all those titles. At the end of the day, we're men. And we can hold each other accountable. But when we do that, we want it rooted in love. We want it rooted in righteousness. And we got to have the intent that I'm doing this because I want the best for you. I want you to reach the highest point of yourself. And we also have to be open for that person, that same person who we rebuke to rebuke us when we're in the wrong. Now, I'm not saying you got to be waiting on your time, your turn to jump in. I'm just waiting on this guy to mess up. I'm waiting on him. He rebuked me. I'm waiting on my chance to rebuke him. No. It's the wrong spirit. <laughs> it's the wrong intent. Wrong energy. Wrong energy, man. But we all are men at the end of the day. And we should embrace a friend rebuking us. I've had friends throughout my life that said they love me. Said... We were boys, but when it came time to support, when it came time to manifest those words into action and works, they were nowhere to be found. And then it would come out how they truly felt about me. Word, word would get back to me, what they were saying behind my back. And what they were saying may have been true, but a true friend openly rebukes another friend. They don't go behind their back. They don't tell others what's going on with that friend. They come to them face to face and say, you're wrong. Jesus constantly did this with the disciples. Constantly. He did it with Peter uh, quite often. Uh, Paul did it with Peter. Yeah, man, they would throw on Peter's ass. Peter's ass, man. Sometimes it'd be like that. Sometimes you got that one friend and you got to constantly rebuke him. But by Jesus constantly rebuking these disciples, man, sharpening up the, their character, their spirit, they went on to do great things. That's why I said, man, he told him, he said, you're going to go on to do greater things than me. And that's what we should want. 
I'm not rebuking you to hold it over your head, to 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 uh, hurt you, to dishonor you. I'm doing it because I know where you can be. I see the potential. I see the greatness in you. And I would want you to do the same thing for me. I got a friend, well, I used to have a friend who, who would tell me, yeah, but, um, man, I'd be seeing your, your post on Facebook, and I'd be seeing your videos. He said, man, you know, man, man, you be saying some powerful stuff. And, uh, man, I know, you know, I don't comment, I don't respond to anything, you know, I just don't do that. But, uh, man, I, I appreciate it. You know, man, I, I would listen to that. <laughs> I'm like, man, you know, I just let, let people hang themselves a lot of times. And he eventually hung himself, figuratively speaking. And that's that secret love the scripture's talking about. That's that secret love, man. And um, that's not what you want. On the flip side... I've had strangers <clears throat> or people I've just met, I've just built a report with that have supported, that have done things for me that have uh, almost emotionally floored me, man, in joy and just uh, in reverence and, and uh, disbelief. Like, man, this brother really looking out. One of those brothers is so immortal. Man, that new intro you see with the glass and the ice. Man, that brother prayed that for me. And, uh, yeah, man, just appreciative, you know? The post he create, uh, or the repost, promoting my page, my channel. Hey, man, you, could, you can't put a price on that. That's the kind of people you want to be connected to. Not this guy, and I just met so. And, and, and not not the friend that's been around forever. And he's telling you he doesn't comment, he doesn't react. But he sees it, he respects it, he loves it. But that's just not his thing. Brothers. Take a good look of who you have around you and in your life. Like I said, man, there's two types of friends. It is better, it is better to endure the wounds of a friend than the kisses of an enemy. When I say kisses, I'm talking about compliments of an enemy. Someone who's portraying to be your friend, but they're really your enemy. Your friend is wounding you. You think he's an enemy, but he's really a friend. Get your mind right. Get your mind right. Open your mind. Be mindful. And know who is who. Let me know what you think in the comments. Brothers, as always, from me to you, love. Peace.